Welcome to the first lesson in the pseudocode series. Hopefully you're now set up and ready to do some pseudocoding using Visual Studio Code. If not, go back and watch the intro video. OCR pseudocode takes its style from a number of languages, mainly Python, but you'll recognize some other C-based or Java conventions in there too. This means you might have to learn some new syntax, but I know with practice, you'll very quickly become familiar with what's expected of you. In this video, we're going to cover comments, assigning variables, casting, inputs and outputs, and logical operators. We'll start with comments. There are multiple reasons for this. The first and most important is that they help organize your thinking. They're an excellent way to jot down the logic that you wish to express in your algorithms. They can serve as a reminder of the steps you wish to take. And if you're answering a question in an exam, by writing the comments first, you're organising your thinking and ensuring that you answer the question fully without missing any marks. The second reason is that students very often do not read the question. I have to write RTQ way too often and students miss accessible marks as a result. Let's take a look. In both questions you're awarded marks for writing comments. Many times, in the pressurised environment of an assessment, students skim read and miss them. In the first question, if you don't add comments, you can only access 4 out of the 8 marks, no matter how good your algorithm is. In the second, the weighting is slightly less. But writing comments is excellent practice. It organises your thinking, it helps lay out the logic, and it gets you extra marks in exams and the NEA. The syntax for a comment is slash slash. This is a C style comment, and it's found in languages such as C, C Sharp and Java. Multi-line comments are not mentioned in the help document, so if you do wish to write them, I'd just write slash slash more than once. Variables in pseudocode are very much like Python. A definition is a name location in memory. We still just use them to make it easy to access data from a memory location. A variable is assigned a value using the equal sign. In the first example, we are saying that the value three has been assigned to the variable x. We also do not have to initialize x to use it or explicitly give x a data type like in some languages. x will become an integer because we assigned an integer to it. In the same way, that name becomes a string when we assign Bob to it and miles becomes a floating point number when we assign 7.6. Variables can also have scope. They could have scope that is just local to a procedure or function and not be accessible outside of that subroutine, or they could be global. And you can use the global keyword to denote this. In terms of writing variable names, stick to camel case or underscore case, no numbers or symbols at the start, and no spaces between words. Just a quick note on using shorthand assignment. I often get asked if it's okay to use in the exams. The pseudocode guide does not specifically mention using it, but the guidance says that as long as the pseudocode be reasonably inferred by a competent programmer, then it should be okay, so I see no issue using it. Casting also works the same way as in Python. If you pass the integer 3 to the string function, it will evaluate to a string value of the original data, and this will be then returned. The int function will convert a string 3 to an integer, and finally, a string of 3.14 would be evaluated to a floating point number using the float function. In terms of inputs and outputs, once again, they are the same as we've experienced in Python. We use the input function and assign the result to a variable that we can then manipulate in the rest of our pseudocode. Remember, input defaults to a string data type. You can use casting in the same way, to convert a specific data type to assign to the variable. If we take a look at guess equals int input, please enter a whole number between 1 and 10. On the left hand side of the equal sign, we have a variable, guess. On the right hand side is an expression. Remember an expression is always evaluated to just one value before being assigned to the variable. So take x equals 5 plus 3. 5 plus 3 is an expression made from values and operators. This would be evaluated first, and then 8 would be assigned to x, and x 
weeks would become an integer. Inputs work in a similar way. If we have multiple nested function calls in our expression, they still have to be evaluated to just one value before being placed in our variable. And they work from the inside to the outside. The function input, please enter a whole number between one and 10, is evaluated first. It is on the innermost part of our expression. Input functions always return a string, even if the user types a number. This then needs to be passed to the next level of our expression and cast to an int. Once this has happened, we can assign our input to guess, which, as long as the user didn't type anything silly, is now of type int. The key difference between an expression and a statement is that an expression always equates to a single value. A statement does not. Outputs also work the same, and typically output strings. Marks are often available for outputting the result of some computation at the end of a question, and you may be required to use concatenation using the plus sign. You can use them to build up an output string, but the exam board expect you to remember to also use casting to convert data to a string when joining them together. You can see this in the examples. We concatenate the pound sign to the floats 12.49 or 9.99 respectively. Forgetting to cast the float to a string could potentially cost you marks, so my advice would be to make sure that you've done this after any algorithm questions. We can use the key terms AND, OR and NOT in the same way that we're also used to. They are typically shown in capitals. The comparison operators are also the same, with a check to see if something is the same being double equals. Remember, we use single equals to assign values to variables. I'll let you read through the rest yourself. You can pause if you need to. The arithmetic operators are the same. We use the key term mod for modulus rather than a percentage sign and div rather than the Python double slash. Mod and div make their way into most papers, so you should pay particular attention to them. Finally, we use the caret symbol to show powers, so in the example 3 to the power 4. Right, that's enough theory for now, and you've got chance to practice in the class exercises. In the next video, we look at selection.